Okay. It records video. This works. Um, <coughs> do you get do you get emails from my email? You'll get it eventually. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, we are missing two people. Yeah. Yeah. Alex. Okay, but I think we're going to get started. And those guys are missing out on movie day. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Uh, no, we're not going to watch a bug <laughs> one. Um, we're going to watch movies with real bugs. Um, and all kinds of cool stuff. And other classes, they may just go and be like, oh, we're going to watch movie today, and they're just going to put on a movie to you. I'm going to show you guys like 10 movies today. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be super awesome. First, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about, well, first of all, we have our mix-up. Since we don't have, since it's movie day, we're going to have the animated GIF for our ambient video. How's it going? <laughs> hey, Danielle. Hi, Danielle. You made it just in time for movie day. Yeah. What's up, guys? Oh, okay, cool. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't sleep last night. I didn't sleep last night either. I didn't sleep last night. Like, it's not even. Great. Nobody's ever slept ever. Awesome. Um, so anyway, quick. So in movie day, we instead of a video, we have an animated GIF um, to mix it up. Uh, here is a robotic cockroach. I believe this is from Backyard Brains. Um, it uh, looks like it is just doing like, okay, I tell it to go one way, it stimulates one side, I tell it to go another way, it stimulates another side. But, uh, this is going to segue into my mini lecture of the day. Is this thing still recording? Yes, it is. Go photo booth. Um, so, my mini lecture of the day is about taking things that look like they're just very simple binary controls of like on, off cat rubs this, then this happens. Um, adding in uh, behaviors to your elements. Um, so really making use of the, the digital components of your thing to enact behaviors. So while this looks like it's just going like, okay, go one way, go the other way, I'm gonna send electricity here, I'm gonna send electricity here. Um, it's only slightly, but it's slightly more sophisticated than that. Um, they actually have to stimulate, so they have two wires going into the antennae of the cockroach. Um, the cockroach uses its antennae to find walls. Um, the walls then, uh, whenever it touches a wall, it wants to drive along that side of the wall. So it's actually doing the reverse of when this side gets stimulated, it thinks there's a wall here, so it kind of turns slightly this way to stay on it. Um, but it uses a slightly different control system. It also has to stimulate the electrical pulsing at the right frequency to stimulate the nerves in the cockroach. Because if you just apply, apply direct current, you just put five volts there, then um, the cockroach is like, no, you don't, you don't actually, your nerves don't actually respond to that. Um, so it's going at like 50 hertz or something like that. Uh, I forget what the exact specifications are. But it's slightly more sophisticated than it looks. And, yeah. That's an actual roach with a little uh, backpack on it. And you can actually just buy these backpacks and these kits uh, online from a place called Backyard Brains. Question. Uh, yes? That sounds scary. Is there like a frequency that like humans can feel more than just like direct current? Totally. Um, that's, uh, they use that for uh, muscle stimulation, for yeah. like rehabilitation stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, like I that. remember that. Yeah. Sorry. They use a little electro pulse thing when my optic nerve was damaged, and it felt really, really weird, and it made your eye move. Uh huh. Yeah. There's also um, <laughs> they use it in some like uh, sexual rehabilitation things. Um, there's some people who are like permanently paralyzed, and like let's say there's a guy and his wife, and the guy gets paralyzed, but they want to kind of procreate. Um, the doctors excite you have a whole like redundant nervous so like even if your spine gets severed you have redundant nerves that go down uh, through your spine that go to like your reproductive stuff um, and so you can actually um, scientists have made a thing where you can make a human male orgasm and then collect his reproductive material so that person can still reproduce 
Um, so that's kind of cool. But they had to find like the right nerves and the right uh, frequency responses to this. So it's not only just about finding some sort of frequency response, um, it's also important to make uh, actual behaviors. So if you look over here, um, what, are, what am I looking at here? There's some sort of, this is something in Apple. <coughs> it's an iPad. It's, it's an iPad, cool. What are they doing? Thing. Tell me what they're doing. Okay, exactly. So let's focus on just this part. They're swiping down, right? Um, so they swipe, that sends a command uh, to the Apple device, and the swipe tells the Apple device, like, you should open up this control center. So then it should just go straight to, like, now I have this window popping up. But instead, they add in these different elements. The thing does, doesn't just appear, it slides down with your swiping. It doesn't just slide down when you're swiping either. It has its built-in own like simulated physics, um, where it's acting as if it has some sort of weight. It hits here. It doesn't just stop. It bounces a little bit. All of this serves to connect you more with the actual um, device that you're using, and kind of preys on your tacit knowledge that you have from encounters that you have in the world around you. You build in your own weird control schema, even though they don't have to make it bounce like that. That does something in your brain where it makes you want to swipe it, it makes you understand, it makes you not fear it, it makes you kind of engage with it more. And this can be very important when you are trying to make things, especially in the output side, back to your animals. Um, maybe um, if you know that they respond to light, um, and they really enjoy light, maybe you don't want to just turn the lights on or turn them off. Maybe you want to make the light appear in some way representing how they encounter these changes in their own natural world. Um, for instance, like maybe the mice, um, if the mouse starts doing something that's really weird and not natural, um, this might make the cat like get weirded out by it. There's a reverse of that, though, where the cat might also become more interested in it because it's like a super stimulant. But either way, you're crafting some sort of behavior. If the mouse doesn't really do anything at all, um, especially anything very like robust or interesting, the cat probably won't have much interest in it. So think about, real hard, when you're designing your projects, maybe not just having it be like, okay, I have a threshold, it triggers this. Try to use um, all of you are bringing some sort of coding skills and stuff. Build in some sort of a little bit more um, uh, complexity on the coding side uh, to really show that you understand different systems that your creatures are engaging in. And it'll really round out your project very nicely. Does this make sense? Any questions? Cool. Okay. So now we're going to start movie time.